In this section, we're going to cover the different types of thunderstorms that can occur in our area. It's important to know what types of thunderstorms to expect any given day because the type of thunderstorm will tell you what types of hazards you can expect. This is important not just for spotting and reporting back to the National Weather Service the type of hazard, but also by knowing the hazards in advance that are possible, this will help protect you and keep you safe. The first type of thunderstorm we're going to cover is the single cell storm. Now you may hear this referred to by a couple of different names such as pulse storm or garden variety storm. A single cell storm consists of one updraft, usually a very low probability of severe weather. Usually severe weather does not occur with these type of storms, but we can get small hail, gusty winds, and heavy rain. In the diagram on the right you can see you have a well-developed updraft, but a downdraft quickly forms with this type of storm and this downdraft will dissipate that updraft quickly. So these are not very long lasting storms and as we mentioned, the threat of severe weather is low. The following is a radar loop of several examples of these single cell storms developing during an afternoon in northern Illinois. You can see these storms get intense for a very brief time as indicated by the reflectivities of the darker reds, but then they quickly diminish. So they're not long lasting you could get some small hail gusty winds with any one of these storms, but again, the severe weather threat is very low. And the next type of storm we're going to cover is the multi-cell storm. Unlike the single cell storm, these multi-cell systems do generally have more wind shear, and because these storms have more wind shear, they're more organized and longer lasting and pose a greater threat of severe weather. In fact, the multi-cell storm is generally responsible for most of the severe weather in our area. On the left, you can see we list severe weather threat levels for several different hazards. With these multi-cell storms, we list wind and hail in the middle as a moderate threat. Flooding, we list as a high threat just because with these multiple updrafts, you can get several storms pass over the same location, posing a greater threat for flooding. Tornadoes, we list as a low to moderate threat with these multi-cell systems because there is more wind shear and they're better organized. And there's, a, there's just a variety of hazards just to keep in mind with multi-cell storms, including downbursts, straight line winds, and small to medium sized hail. Now if you're out spotting during a particular day, this might be what you would see during a multi-cell storm setup. In this picture we're kind of looking back to the west-northwest and you can see several different updrafts in this picture you can see on the far right we have our most vertically developed updraft with those very sharp edges to the cloud indicating a lot of water and ice in the cloud indicating an updraft. You can see that's your strongest cell on the right since it's the most vertically developed. But you can see there's several other examples of updrafts in this image in the middle. And then also on the left we get our newest cells developing there. They're not as vertically developed but you can see those very sharp cloud edges which again that's that that clue that you have an updraft, that very sharp edge to the cloud indicating a lot of water and ice. So that's your newest cell on the left. The following represents a time lapse, a three hour time lapse of a multi cell system. You can see by speeding this up, there are several individual updrafts form. Once that updraft dissipates, another one quickly develops. So this just gives you the sense is there are just almost too many to count updrafts in this image, just indicating how well organized this type of multi-cell storm is. Now there are different types of multi-cell storms. The first we're going to talk about here is the squall line. On the right you can see how a squall line would form. Typically we see these with cold frontal boundaries in our area, which is quite common. You get a very strong updraft at the leading edge of the cold front, and the strength of this updraft causes precipitation to form in the form of rain and hail. That rain cooled air then will form a strong downdraft which you can see in the diagram. Now this setup typically causes a progression of experiencing a strong outflow boundary initially with that rain cooled air. And then once that outflow boundary passes, not long after that you'll get a period of heavy rain followed by moderate rain, then tapering to light rain. Now the threat levels on the left, we do list wind as a moderate to high threat just because that downdraft is usually very intense with these squall lines. So we do list wind as a high threat. Uh, because you do have a strong updraft at the leading edge of that cold front, the stronger the updraft, the longer the hail can be suspended in the air, giving it a longer time to grow. 
Now, precipitation may not last an excessively long time with these squall lines, but the precipitation rates can be very, very intense for a short time, so we do list flooding as a moderate threat. And we also list tornadoes as a moderate threat with these squall lines. It's not uncommon for some embedded, usually weak tornadoes to develop with these squall lines. So that's something just to keep in mind, is it may be something we tend to forget about with, uh, with squall lines. We, our awareness needs to be still on a high level for uh, tornado spin-ups. Now an example of a squall line in our area can be seen in this loop here back from August of 2008. It was a squall line which affected much of northern Illinois and northern Indiana. Um, this was a case where wind was the main threat, but we also had some embedded tornadoes which occurred. I believe there were four or five tornadoes that day uh, which occurred with the squall line as it moved across Illinois and Indiana. Now you can see on the right, this is what you might see if you were out east of this squall line as it approached. It's what we call a shelf cloud. That's a typical signature you will see uh, with these uh, squall lines. Once that shelf cloud feature passes overhead, uh, you'll usually get a period of very strong winds. And we'll get into more what causes this shelf cloud appearance in more detail in the cloud identification section. Now another type of multi-cell storm is really just an extreme case of a squall line called a derecho. We did have one of these locally in June 29, 2012. A storm that began in northern Illinois developed into a convective complex that moved through northern Indiana and survived all the way to the mid-Atlantic states. Now a derecho typically has several reports of not only severe winds, but high, high level winds in excess of 70 miles per hour for an uh, area that expands usually at least 250 miles in length. So it's really just an extreme case of a squall line. On this particular day, June 29th, 2012, you can see the Storm Prediction Center storm reports on the right. Anywhere you have a blue dot, you have a severe thunderstorm wind gust of 58 miles per hour or greater. And where you have a black square, that's a storm report of winds of 75 miles per hour or greater. So you can just see the expansive number of reports from northwest Indiana all the way to the mid-Atlantic of these numerous high wind reports. Now, in terms of severe weather threat level with these derechos, we do have wind listed as a high threat, obviously. Hail is a moderate threat. You can still get very strong updrafts at the leading edge of these, uh, this large um, convective system. Uh, flooding is a low to moderate threat. And even tornadoes is a, is a moderate threat with these type of systems, just because usually we have a lot of wind shear, they're very organized, so tornadoes are a threat. Uh, but it's really just that long, longevity and expansive area of those high winds which make these derechos so dangerous. And in Fort Wayne on this particular day, the Fort Wayne Airport reported a wind gust of around 90 miles per hour, just indicating just how high end of a concern these derechos can be. Now the following is a radar loop from that day, just showing you how this complex survived all the way from northern Indiana to the mid-Atlantic states. The last type of storm we want to cover is the supercell. Now the supercell is the most organized of all the storms we've talked about. The supercell is probably the most dangerous storm, and the good news is that we don't get as many of these type of storms as the multi-cell storms. But here is the diagram showing you an example of what a supercell would look like, kind of looking back to the west at the storm. To the north, on the right side of the image, we have rain and hail. In the middle here is the wall cloud, which is where your strongest updraft is located. And as we'll talk about later in the cloud ID section, that's where you want to focus for possible tornado development just because your updraft is the strongest in that wall cloud area. Now we do list all risks as high with a supercell. So wind, hail, heavy rain, tornadoes, all listed as high threats. And why we are particularly concerned about supercells is because when we start to talk about some of the strong and violent tornadoes and also when we get to those very large hail sizes, golf ball size and larger, when we talk about those type of events, we're usually talking about supercells. Now it is important to note that not all supercells will produce a tornado, so that's important to keep in mind. 
but when we do get those extreme reports, they usually are associated with these more organized uh, supercell type storms. We did have a recent example locally of a day where numerous supercells formed across northern Indiana and northwest Ohio. That was August 24th, 2016, where we had a number of tornadoes form across the area. The radar imagery in this case shown in this, these couple of images are just west of Woodburn, Indiana, where we had a supercell move through that produced one of our stronger tornadoes of the day. You can see reflectivity on the left and velocity on the right. Just west of Woodburn there, you can see those bright green colors indicating winds towards the radar, or adjacent to the red colors, winds away from the radar, just indicating that strong circulation with the, the storm itself. And this did produce a strong tornado in, in the Woodburn vicinity. Here's an example of what you might see with the supercell if you're spotting. Notice from this particular supercell, you can see just those striations in the clouds just indicating that that strong rotation in the whole storm itself. That's a typical thing you'll see, those striations indicating the storm scale rotation. Another supercell image here gives us a better look at the wall cloud part of that supercell. And if you remember, that's where we have the absolute strongest updraft with the storm. So if we were going to monitor for possible tornado development, it would be with this wall cloud, which is where your strongest updraft is located.